Hi there, USBGF uh, members. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting the USBGF. Here we have a very typical position. Red is on roll. He's up 20 pips. Um, should he double? If he doubles, should blue take or drop? Well, I'm a strong believer in Woolsey's Law. I use it every single time. As a matter of fact, any of my students, if they don't use Woolsey's Law, if they tell me whether or not they would double before they tell me whether they would take or drop and don't use Woolsey's Law, they hear this sound. They hear a slap. I hope that helps them remember. It sure helped me remember the time that Jake Jacobs hit me in the back of the head when I made a mistake on bearing off against the two-point. I've never made that mistake again. So I'll remember to use Woolsey's Law. Do you think blue has a take here? Sure. Easy take. Should red double? Well, the major criteria for doubling when you think your opponent should take is whether or not you have too many market losers, whether you're likely to lose your market on the next roll. Well, if you use that theory here, you're going to have problems because you really don't have very many rolls that lose your market. Double five, double four, double three, double two. Those are your only really great rolls here. The only rolls that are likely to cost you to lose your market. And if you listen to John O'Hagan, he believes that at a normal match score, 11 away, 11 away, you need about 25% market losers. But John is smart enough to say it depends how much you lose your market by. And if you roll one of those four market losers, you've lost your market by a lot. Your opponent is only going to have a very small winning percentage. So that's one reason that you might want to double. Let's take a look at the market losers, by the way. You can count your market losers and see if we're right, that only those high doubles are really major market losers. Go to Analyze, Dice Distribution, and voila! Hit the graph, hit 3-ply. I said double 4, double 5, double 3, and double 2. Those are the only ones that push you well above 75% where you clearly lose your market. So, it's interesting, isn't it? you can check your market losers. It also looks like you don't have too many really horrible rolls. You're going to be close to 70% with just about every roll. 6-6 six, six is your only bad roll and even then you're still over 50%. So even at a quick glance you can see what your next rolls are. In more complex situations this dice distribution is incredibly helpful. All of a sudden you're going to look at this thing and you're going to look down here and you're going to see some roll you never even thought of was a market loser. Or you're going to see an anti-joker really bad roll that you didn't think of. Oh my god, look what happens if I roll a 3-2 here. I'm leaving a double shot. So you're going to see things and pick up things by using dice distribution. It's a really great tool. But in this situation, I've stopped using market losers. I've stopped using all kinds of things because I was given a beautiful formula that tells me when I have a cube in these situations. And the formula is called the rule of four. If I have four or fewer checkers on my midpoint and I'm up 15% or more in the race, I have a double. That's enough to be worth losing my market. By the way, I don't have to roll a double four, five, three or two on the first roll. I might roll it any time in the next four rolls and I've lost my market. And if I never roll it, there's still a pretty good chance that he's only going to get a single shot at me where I'm favored. And if he doesn't hit it, I win. So it's not so bad to turn the cube here. Maybe I'll lose two points some of the time and win two points most of the time instead of one point some of the time and one point most of the time. So I'd rather be gambling it with the cube at two when I'm a pretty big favorite and when I have some huge market losers like those doubles. But the rule of four helps me. Am I, do I have four or fewer checkers here? Yes. Am I up 15% in the race? Well, in 112 race, 15% would be about 18 and I'm up 20. Let's take a look at what the god of a backgammon says. It says I have a double, small double. So it's right, it worked. By the way, if these checkers were here the same rule would apply. I'm up more than 15 percent. I have four or fewer checkers here. It works. You'll see that this is also a double. The odds of his getting a shot, hitting it, winning it, are good enough for me because of the market losers that I have where I should give the cube now because of that rule of four. 
Obviously, if I have only three checkers here, I'm even in better shape. I just increased my race, so let's be fair and let's increase his race too so that I haven't just changed the race. I've left the race at the same, about the same. In fact, 15% of that would be about 15 lead. I'll make it even closer. Let's give him a better racing game. And I only have three checkers here now. And it's still a double. That rule is pretty good. It works pretty good. Let's uh, see when it doesn't work. It says if I have more than four checkers there, I don't have a double. So let's do more than four checkers, but let's let's make the race where I'm still up, say, more than 15%. 12 and 6 is 18. That's not enough. Let's put me up more. Okay, now I'm up more than 15%, but I have more than four checkers here. According to the rule, this would not be a double. Right on the edge. Right on the edge. So it says if I have four or fewer and I'm up 15% of the race, I do have a double. It doesn't say I don't if I have five or if I'm up a lot more. I could be up enough more in the race. So you take this race and increase it by enough and then you're going to make it into a very small double. But look how small a double it is even when you're up so much. So that fifth checker means a lot. That means that there's a lot more work to be done before I can really clear this point safely. And I may have more wastage. And he has a lot more rolls uh, to catch up in the game. So whenever you have a position where you have a really good rule of thumb that helps you, and I have rules of thumb for prime games, for back games, for holding games. I have all kinds of rules of thumb that apply to each type of game. And these rules of thumb are not... Um, they're, they're generalities. They're generally right. They're not right all the time. You have to apply some judgment based on the timing and the boards and the pip count and everything else that's involved. But they generally will help you, and I hope this helped you here, because it certainly is a very common situation where your opponent is holding your five point or your seven point, and knowing this rule of four, I think will uh, serve you very, very well going forward and save you a lot of headache going forward. Of course, in all these situations, you have a take for a long, long time because you hardly ever get gammoned in these games. You may as well take uh, and see what happens. As long as you're not going to get gammoned, losing two points instead of one isn't going to hurt your equity that much. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.